May I take uh, a few minutes of your time to both tell you why we have organized this, <coughs> why we organized this function, this talk, and also something about uh, the Observer Research Foundation's commitment to interfaith dialogue and some of my own reflections on Turkey. <coughs> Friends, Turkey is home to one of the greatest civilizations on our planet. It's, uh, it's when you go there, like Rome, you know, the Turkish civilization has absorbed influences from so many cultures, so many civilizations, so many spiritual traditions. Even though the Christian population now is very small, at one time Christianity was, uh, uh, you know, it really flowered and blossomed in Turkey. <clears throat> and therefore, it was very heartening to see that just last week, Pope Francis when he visited Turkey, you know, he visited <coughs> the Blue Mosque and not only that, he led prayers along with Muslim followers facing Mecca and praying for peace. Sufism, you know, which is truly a <coughs> Islam's message of peace and brotherhood, has been integral to the Ottoman Empire. And I was particularly <coughs> impressed by the teachings of Fethullah Gulay. Uh, you know, for the past nearly a decade, I wrote about him in 2006 in, in the Times of India. And ever since then, I've been following the Fethullah Gulay's message as well as the, the work of the Gulay movement. Friends, you know, as these two films showed us, the work of this movement is truly admirable. <clears throat> we organize this function today to make Indian people, especially people in our city, more aware of the Gulay movement and especially the teachings of Fethullah Gulay. Even though he's a, he's a global figure, in fact, he's rated as one of the most influential personalities in the world, somehow people in India are not well aware of Fethullah Gulay. <clears throat> and we have seen from this film why it is important for us to know about both Fethullah Gulay and his movement. His movement, especially his work in the field of education, is service to humanity for the cause of peace. It is faith-inspired, but not faith-specific. There's a big difference. You know, as he himself says, you know, his, his teachings are grounded in Islam, but they are for the entire humanity. <clears throat> he has been condemning terrorism and ex extremism in the name of Islam whenever such acts have been committed. And friends, this is something which many of you may not know. He has been an admirer of Mahatma Gandhi and in many of his, uh, in many of his discourses, he has paid tribute to Mahatma Gandhi and uh, you know, his, his uh, advocacy of peace and non-violence. Turkey has been a bridge, both literally and figuratively, between the East and the West. If you go to, if you go to Turkey, you know, it's, it's one country that belongs both to Asia and to Europe. And therefore, it, it uh, synthesizes the culture of both Europe and Asia. 
But what I found was that there are also some truly um, admirable links between India and Turkey. I'll just give one example. You know, these days there is a lot of uh, discussion in India on Sanskrit and there's also a lot of discussion on Bhagavad Gita. Now, Turkey had a former Prime, prime Minister, Bulent Eshevit. Is, am I s s pronouncing it right? Bulent E C E Eshevit. Ex Prime Minister. He was, in fact, he was Prime Minister for five, f five times. One of the most admirable politicians in uh, modern Turkish history. He has several times acknowledged that he was deeply influenced by the Bhagavad Gita. And he studied Sanskrit. He studied Tagore's poetry, translated Tagore's poetry into, into Turkish language. So there are these links that we should really cherish. Unfortunately, you know, even though Turkey is uh, one of the most prosperous countries in that part of the world, and as I said, prosperous not just materially but culturally, civilizationally, India's links with Turkey in the modern, in modern times have not been very strong. We know very little about Turkey, our economic ties, our ties in the field of education are rather weak and it's necessary for us to, to build stronger ties. There is a misconception among many Indians that Turkey is a friend of Pakistan and not a friend of India. Frankly, I feel that it doesn't matter if Turkey is also a friend of Pakistan because we also want to be friends with Pakistan. But what is not known is that there are many Turkish people, common people, who deeply admire India, India's culture, India's civilizational heritage. All the great personalities in India are personalities admired by Turkish people. And of course, in modern times, you know, some of Bollywood influence is also growing in Turkey. Friends, for us at the Observer Research Foundation, interfaith dialogue, promotion of interfaith dialogue is, is a matter of commitment and a matter of high priority. We do many things, but we also try to engage ourselves in interfaith dialogue as often as we can. In fact, as <coughs> my colleague Radha mentioned, we had uh, some months back organized a talk on Fethullah Gulay by an Indian scholar who is now teaching in a Turkish university. Last year, not last year, but this early this year in January, we had organized an interfaith conference to promote what we called People Sark, an interreligious conference to promote the values of peace, cooperation among Sark countries. And uh, the leading speaker at this conference was a prominent and highly respected Islamic scholar from Pakistan. Dr. Tahirul Qadri. I don't know how many of you attended that conference, but uh, those of you who are interested, please pick up a copy of his address. I think it's one of the, it's one of the most inspiring and important speeches delivered by a Pakistani Islamic scholar championing the cause of friendship cooperation, peace between India and Pakistan, and also harmony between Hindu and Muslim 
communities and of course all of the communities. And he said that jihad has been hijacked by the terrorists and we have to take it back from them. The same message that Fethullah Gulay has been propagating. Dr. Tahirul Kadri has written this seminal book. It's called Fatwa on Terrorism and Suicide Bombings. The most unequivocal condemnation of terrorism and suicide bombings in the name of Islam and coming from an Islamic scholar. And I had the honor, he requested me to write the introduction to this book for the Indian edition of this book. Similarly, this is another book that uh, we published together. It's, uh, it's called The Supreme Jihad, which explains the true meaning of jihad as a striving, as a human striving for self-purification, self-improvement to go to a higher, higher level. And again, he requested me to write the introduction for this book. And in the introduction, I wrote that if this is jihad, if what is explained in this book by an Islamic scholar, if this is true jihad, then I would like to be a jihadi. This is what I've written. And I've written this, friends, because in my book on Mahatma Gandhi, I have explained how Mahatma Gandhi's own concept of satyagraha was influenced by the concept of jihad. Not many people know this. Satyagraha was influenced by Islam. So we need to revisit all these important linkages in our past for us to understand the present better and create a better future. I also wrote, after my participation in an interfaith conference in, in Rome last year, when I had a, an occasion to also visit Assisi, a very holy pilgrimage place in Italy, the birthplace of uh, Saint Francis. So I wrote, I gave a talk here, and this is the text of my talk, Mahatma Gandhi, Saint Francis, Pope Francis. Three great men and their endeavors to combine Godward devotion with manward love. This is our effort to create better understanding, tolerance, among people of different faiths. And which is why I, I think that the recent visit of Pope Francis to Turkey just last week, it's a landmark visit. Pope Francis, he, of course, he, he denounced terrorism. And he urged Muslim leaders to denounce more forcefully acts of violence against non-Muslims. And he also urged non-Muslims in the West to stop discrimination and bigotry towards Muslims. This coming from a very respected Christian leader, it makes a big impact. So these are, these are the efforts, you know, amidst so much gloom, so much despair in the world, when we hear almost every day acts of violence, acts of terrorism, what is happening in Nigeria, what is happening in Kenya, of course in, in Syria and Iraq and Libya and Egypt, we feel that there is no hope whatsoever for the world. But when we begin to study and begin to look at the endeavors of people like Fethullah Gulay and thousands upon thousands of his followers and similarly the followers of other such great spiritual leaders, we get hope that no, peace will prevail. Peace will prevail over conflict. Peace will prevail over bloodshed. And this, friends, is the purpose for which we have gathered here. I welcome all of you.
you know, we are very happy that in our midst we have some long-standing champions of interfaith dialogue. We have Dr. Zinat Shaukat Ali. She has been promoting interfaith dialogue in India, in Mumbai for many, many, many years. We have Minazul Quran and my dear friend Ali Chisti, activist of Minazul Quran. And we, we have many new faces, you know, representatives of Turkey. So I'm sure that uh, we will have a good dialogue today. And since our main speaker is still not arrived, he may be here any, any time now. Um, can we have some informal dialogue until then to, to continue the spirit of this function? Oh, there he is. Thank you very much, friends.